Fair use copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education and research. Fair use is not an infringement of copyright. All my content is found on the public domain. I follow the fair use dealings and fair use guidelines with my opinions and news that I report to my subscribers about the topic of Apostle David E. Taylor and the JMMI cult. And when we eat lamb, but y'all are hungry for the spiritual meat of the word, aren't you? That's why your lamb is going to taste good more than those who are not here. Your lamb on the last night, amen? Because we're going to eat Jesus the last night. He tells us to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Amen. We must eat him. He commands us to eat him. And so, how many know when you eat Jesus, something happens in your life? So last night, <clears throat> you know, if the blood is the, of the lamb is the most important part of the Passover, the blood. The... You see, once blood is shed, you know it's fresh, but then it dries out and it eventually dies. Right. So it can only speak so long. Once blood dries, it dies. It don't talk anymore. But the blood of Jesus never died. Do you not know the blood that was in Jesus body 2000 years ago is still fresh today? It's fresh. Do you hear me? It's fresh. And God picked all of it up off the ground at the cross and at the tomb. When Jesus rose from the dead, everything, just like when we are called in the rapture back, he's the first fruits of the resurrection. When we are called back from the resurrection, when Jesus come on resurrection day, it says people's bones and flesh are going to all come back together. You understand that everything that was separate, no matter where it is, God brings it all back together. The dead in Christ shall rise first. That means they shall come back to life and resurrect. If you were even cremated, if you were poured in the sea, every particle is going to be recollected. And you're going to be formed back to what you were. So think of this. When Jesus died on the cross, when God raised him from the dead, he, he was the first fruit of the resurrection. God went and got every drop of that eternal blood. That blood is used today. It's still fresh. It does not die. It don't get hard and grow into like a maroon color instead of a bright red color. Jesus' blood is still bright red. Because he was not born like we were. He was born of the spirit eternally. And that's the blood he's fighting with. And that's the blood he's telling us to overcome with. But you got to know how to use it. Do you want to learn how to use it? I said, do you want to learn how to use it? I can't hear you. We cut off the giant's head. We eat giants for our... They are bread for us. That's why every time an attack come against me, I look at it as a piece of garlic bread. It's going to go with my dinner. As a matter of fact, if they make it more interesting, it looks more like garlic bread with cheese on top of it. Cheese on top of it. Oh, what is this that the Holy Spirit is telling me to pray? Oh, great God, Jehovah. Please, I ask you, come down in my generation, in my time, like you did on the Mount Sinai. I, God, I want all the thunders and lightnings. I just want to be honest. I want all the smoke and the mists and the clouds. I want everybody to see that stuff. I... I want your voice to come out of all that and talk to everybody. I, I just think that our generation needs something like that from you. Because men don't believe you no more. I, 
I ask that you will come out of your hiding place, come out of your secret place and manifest thyself to the earth, to the world, God. This has been my prayer. Come down and show your glory. Show your glory. Show your glory. Lift your hands and say, Lord, show your glory. Amen. Say it one more time. Say, show your glory. Hallelujah. Do this for us. Do this for the church. Do this for me. As your friend, I want the world to know that we are friends. People don't know we are really friends because of what I say, but it's going to be because of what you do and how you manifest that. I, that's what I want. I'm asking for that in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you. Amen. What are you talking about? You see, Jesus overcame Satan's power with blood. And you got to understand that the blood, blood is used for warfare. Now, the only people who really don't really understand this and know this are a lot of Christians. Witchcraft people understand it. That's why they're always getting the blood of animals. They're getting the blood of human beings, sacrificing them. That's why you see these little girls on the little cards that says, have you seen me? And you can't never find them because they're gone, they're dead, they're sacrificed, some of them, <clears throat> in the occult, out in the, uh, out in the woods. And uh, you gotta understand, so much darkness go on. But these witchcraft workers use the blood of human beings and animals they use the power that's in blood. Now, you got to understand, there's not only power in the blood of Jesus, there's just power in blood, period. The Bible says the life is in the blood. The what is in the blood? Life. There is life and power in blood. If it wasn't, why did God tell Israel for their sins to offer up animals for their sins? I want you to look at it like this. They had to shed blood. You see that the blood of animals so that it would, it, it would be like a um, recognized by God, spiritual. The blood is spiritual. Y'all are so greedy and hungry, you know that? Our, you gotta understand that God put power in blood, period. In animals' blood, in humans' blood, any kind of blood, in insects, God put power in blood. And this is how witchcraft workers can harness Blood sacrifices. That's why they do blood sacrifices, because it gives them more power from Satan. Satan uses the blood. He just don't use Jesus' blood. He uses other people's blood. Am I making any sense? So you got to understand the devil has his people using blood. And you got to understand God has his people using blood. If you don't understand this about God, then you are missing a major point. God had his people in the Old Testament using blood for their sins, for other things. Are you hearing this? I can't hear you. And so whenever God wanted to make a covenant, he also used blood in the Old Testament of humans. Amen. Without killing them. So you got to understand that when blood is spilled, when blood is shed, there's power with it. I still believe that. <clears throat> what happened to Martin Luther King, how his blood was spilled, it created unity in America. It broke the strong man of racism in America. Are you hearing this here? Do you not know every time you bleed, even if you get injured, immediately, I'm going to give you a revelation here, immediately that blood starts talking. If blood come outside your body for any reason, God starts listening. Do, do you understand that? Any blood that is shed for any reason, even if you get a pen and poke yourself, I don't advise you to do that. I don't want there to be no psychopaths in here. Amen. <laughs> you know, if, if any blood come out of you, blood starts talking. You remember when the Lord said when Abel was killed by Cain and he says his blood speaks to me from the ground. Blood speaks. 
It don't matter who blood it is. If it's a human being's blood, it speaks. Let me tell you another reason why all these years, why forensics and uh, those who work as forensic scientists on homicide cases of people who are murdered and killed, why they usually end up finding the majority of these people. Because the blood of those people is talking to God. I mean, if you deal with them, even their relatives are having dreams of who killed. <clears throat> you understand that it never stops. Those dreams are being, watch this, initiated by the blood that is speaking through those people. And that's why sometimes the, the killer think he's got away and then 10 years later they find one little clue and they catch him. Because that blood, and, and I want to say this to all murderers, if you shed blood, the blood is going to find you. <laughs> and see that knowledge has grown and, and increased through the earth. You see, uh, God has also allowed information to become more abundant. But I'm telling you, there's something else working with that's why God says law enforcement is really a command given by God. It says that God works with the police. He works with law enforcement. It's in the Bible. He works with them. Amen. So watch this. If somebody get murdered, God is already working with law enforcement. I'm going to show you how much of a defeat that murderers are entering into. <laughs> Those who think they're going to get away with it. <laughs> you know, that here it is. First of all. God is already working with law enforcement supernaturally. The Bible says that. Amen. In other words, God takes a concern over blood. And now let me tell you why he takes a concern. Let me go a little deeper. Because it talks. It speaks. The life is in the blood. The blood has a voice on its own. Your blood have a voice on its own. Do you not know if somebody kill and murder you tomorrow, your blood will start talking to God. The moment it's shed, it start talking to God. I'm not no liar. And this is what's wrong with the church. They're so religious. They, they make traditions around scriptures. They only... My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. May ye pour fresh oil on us, O oh, Holy Spirit, O oh, Spirit of light, you're welcome. A cult disguised as a church?